So I'm going to play through the various adventures in the Castle Ravenloft board game. I've had this game for a number of years, but you know I only get around to playing around with it uh, once a year if I'm lucky. And so despite having it since uh, I believe I got it in 2015, I, I have only ever actually played the first two or three adventures. So we're going to start off with Adventure 1 and work our way through the uh, the adventures. And it might take me who knows how long, many years, hopefully not that long. As far as the adventure setup goes, I've already gone through and shuffled all the dungeon tiles and the game tells you to find the secret stairwell and place it after the 10th tile. So we know that the secret stairwell will be the 10th, uh, excuse me, will be the 11th tile we draw. I have all the monsters sorted and put over here. Have my dice tray ready here with my dice. Have all the decks shuffled and ready to go. And I'll be playing as Alyssa. And part of the setup tells you to go through the treasure deck and draw cards until you get an item. And I drew that card first, and it was not an item, so you just discard any cards uh, that are non-items until you finally get an item. The item I drew was Holy Water, and I think this could actually come in handy. Um, we'll, we'll address that item card when we get to it, but you can read the text there. I really like Alyssa because she has this careful attack, which I find really useful. It allows her to just automatically deal one damage to an adjacent monster without having to roll, so there's, you can't miss. So that's one thing that's nice about that. And I would say the majority of the monsters only have one hit point, so that works out really well. Some of them, like the, the Blazing Skeleton and I think the Gargoyle, maybe the uh, Wraith, have more than one hit point. but for the majority it comes in really handy. So we've got our sun token set to morning and every time we draw a white tile we have to move the sun token one more to the right until we get all the way over here to sunset at which point Strahd wakes up. If you haven't already drawn quite a few tiles by the time you get to that point there's a good chance you're gonna die because Strahd's really powerful and, you know, he's hard to hit. He has a lot of hit points. You're probably not going to kill him. And um, so, yeah, we hope that by the time we get to sunset, we've already uncovered most of the tiles that we need to get to the secret stairwell. The last thing I'll mention is I created this turn tracker sheet just to uh, help me keep track of my turns. And the reason I did that is because the game is pretty difficult but one of the most difficult parts of the game is just playing each turn and not skipping a step or not forgetting to draw an item or forgetting to play an encounter or something like that. They do give you these little turn uh, cards that tell you how the different phases play out, but I, f for me, this works a lot better. So let's begin. You wake up alone in the depths of Castle Ravenloft. The last thing you remember was when the man with the piercing eyes and long cape approached you on the dark street outside the inn. It had to be Count Strahd, the vampire. Outside the castle, you know that the sun is high in the sky. Now you have to find your way out of here before the sun sets and Strahd returns to finish whatever foul plan he begun last night. Okay, so that kicks off the adventure, and we have Alyssa sitting here on Strahd's Crypt. And the first thing we do is we go into the hero phase, and as part of the, uh, like I said, as part of the setup, I already drew the item card, so that's done. And I keep track of the health up here because I don't like messing with those little health tokens. They're just annoying. So the first thing in the hero phase, technically, I suppose, would be that you need to use one of the healing surges if you're dead. Now, of course, that's not going to happen on turn one or turn two or hopefully turn three. But so we're not going to do that. So just to kind of keep track of what's going on here, you know, I just put like a like a dash through there just to kind of indicate I acknowledge that. 
And really the only thing that we can do is, is move off of the tile, or I should say move somewhere on the tile, because there are no monsters, so there's nothing to attack. And the only thing that you can do in the hero phase is you can move, then attack, you can attack, then move, or you can move and then move again. And since this is turn one and nothing has happened yet, the only thing that we can really do is move. Now, one of the nice things about Alyssa is that she has this ability called Scout. And it says you are a master explorer. During your exploration phase, you can explore one unexplored edge on your tile, even if you aren't adjacent to it. So every other hero in the game would have to be on one of these outer squares in order to qualify for the exploration phase, but Alyssa does not. However, since this is the first turn, we'll go ahead and use one of our move steps to go ahead and just move her up one so that she is indeed on an unexplored edge. And I'll just go ahead and note on my sheet here that I did a move. There's no other action that we can take. We, of course, would not get a treasure a card because in order to get a treasure card, you have to kill a monster. And on the first step, that's kind of irrelevant. So I'll just put a dash through there, just indicating that I'm acknowledging that step. Now we're in the exploration phase. And are we going to explore? Yes, we are. So let's go ahead and draw a tile. And we got a, it's an arcane circle. These name tiles don't have any special meaning in this game, except for um, Strahd's Crypt and the Secret Stairwell. All these other ones are just uh, flavor, and they, this, this might have a special meaning in some other adventure. But when I place the tile down, I place it so that the black triangle is facing in. That's the way you place tiles. It's a black triangle, which is uh, some, in some sense good for us because that means we don't have to move the token forward, but it's bad because we have to take an encounter. But before we do all that, um, we'll just make some notes here. So we got a black tile, and now we're going to place a monster. So I'm just going to indicate yes that I'm doing that. So we come to the monster pile and draw out a monster. And it is a Cobalt Skirmisher, so I'm just going to put that down there. Come over to my pile of monsters. Grab out a Cobalt Skirmisher. Which looks something like that. And you place that down on the bone pile of the tile that you just drew. So... And I'm just going to indicate that my monster number one that Alyssa has under her activation is the Cobalt Skirmisher. I'll just put Chaos for short. So now we have an encounter, and we don't have any choice. Um, we have to take it because we don't have any experience yet. And experience lets you negate encounters, but right now we don't have any experience. So we have to draw from the encounter deck. And it's red, so without even... <laughs> I already know it's going to do some damage. So this is called Hands of the Dead. Several hands crawl from the earth and grab at you. Attack each hero on the hero's tile. So we're going to roll a d20, and we're going to add that attack bonus to it. So like if we roll a 6, then we'll add 6 to it for 12. And it says, uh, and if it hits, the hero will be slowed. So if we, if, it, if we get hit, we're going to take two damage and we're going to be slowed down. But one thing I don't like about some of these encounters is that you take damage even if it misses, which seems ridiculous to me, but that's just how this game is. It's kind of a troll. So we're going to uh, discard the encounter, but we're going to roll the d20. And we got a 7. 7 plus 6 is 13. And Alyssa's armor class is 15. So luckily, it missed. But unlucky for us, even though it missed, we still take one 
damage. Not sure how that happens. I guess we got some shrapnel or something like that. But at least, you know, it missed and we didn't take the full damage and we didn't get slowed down. So I'm just going to indicate up here that I took a damage. So I'm just going to reduce my damage down to 7. And that's it for the encounter. There is no villain in place, so we don't have to worry about that. I'll just, for the sake of this first turn, I'll put a dash through there just to indicate that I'm acknowledging that. And now, as part of the villain phase, the Cobalt Skirmisher will activate. So I'm going to pick up the Cobalt Skirmisher's card, and we're going to see what its tactics are. If the Cobalt is within one tile of the hero, it attacks the closest hero with a javelin. So this one's pretty straightforward. It doesn't move or become adjacent to us. It just, right, right from where it's standing, it's just going to throw its javelin and try to hit us. And it has a plus nine, so that's a pretty good chance of hitting us. Let's go ahead and roll for the Cobalt Skirmisher. 17. So without even adding in the plus 9 bonus, it hits us because our AC is only 15. So let's just carefully read the card because some of these cards, you know, have a little bit of extra stuff. This one, obviously, this one doesn't. I can tell just by the glance. So it's just going to do one damage and that's it. But you always want to look carefully at the card because sometimes there's like, you know, one damage plus you're immobilized or something along those lines or... You just always want to carefully read over the card. But in this case, we just take one damage. So I'm going to update my uh, player health. So now we're down to six. So we take, we've already taken two damage. But luckily, we are now at the end of the villain phase. There are no other monsters, thankfully. So now we will move on to turn number two. And I'm going to make each turn a separate video. So for now, we're done, and we're going to end this video and move on to turn two.